Hey folks, welcome back to Game and Coverage, where we take a look at games, chat about the gaming news in the industry, and of course, stream for fun. Today we're taking a look at Gaming News Consolidated. This is September 1st through the 7th, and uh, boy, we got a lot to cover this week. Oh my word. I can't believe it's been a week already, but this is like a week and a half worth of news. And uh, yeah, just hoping that uh, my audio is working today. Oh, it's working. Thank goodness. Okay, well, let's get started before it messes up, yeah? Okay, so what all are we going to be covering today? We've got to talk about quite a few games. X Defiant, Concord. we got to talk about a little bit, too, with what Sony's doing. we got got um, Enotrea and Xbox dropping the ball. we got Visions of Mana. We have also multiple layoffs. Um, somebody's leaving Capcom after 30 years. Space Marine 2, Minecraft movie, I mean, we got a bunch, including, yeah, Star Wars Outlaws and the Black Ops 6 beta. So, we got a bunch to cover, and the whole idea with uh, Gaming News Consolidated is that I take hours every week to watch videos, read articles, and I put it all together here for you. And, uh, and yeah, it's nothing fancy, of course, to listen to or to watch, you know, but uh, it's just a podcast, you know, something to listen to while you're commuting to work, while you're doing your shift, or while you're doing chores or groceries or whatever. you got to have something to listen to, right, to get you through the day. So, let's go ahead and get started. Hopefully you guys are doing well. Yeah, the heat is still picking up around here. we got some tornadoes, too, that are still kind of lingering a little bit. Earthquakes around the world in some parts, and then we still have hurricanes. So, yeah, just be aware and be safe out there, folks. I hope to see you guys next week. So, let's talk about X Defiant. It might already be in trouble. So, the last we heard, X Defiant had uh, t about roughly 20,000 players across all platforms. That's 99.99% less than what they started with at launch, which was like 8, 10 million. Uh, quite a few, but that was like unique players. I don't think that was monthly active. Um, I guess technically it would have been for the first month, but apparently if an insider of Ubisoft was happy with about roughly 20,000 players. And we see a lot of like live service games that keep going in the tens of thousands, generally speaking. Uh, usually picks up a lot during the weekend and then trails off during the week. But yeah, there's people that are there and there's some people that are buying and keeping the studio going with like a smaller crew to roll out those updates, etc. But apparently that's actually lower now. And so this launched May of 2024, really not that long ago, but, uh, you know, Ubisoft has given the team we know of until November to actually get the counts back up. That's just a couple of months, and I honestly don't think they can do it because Black Ops 6 is launching October 25th, and I've been playing the beta, and definitely there's a lot of people playing the beta. Um, the lag that we had... Uh, during some of the beta was honestly pretty brutal. And we get, I think, through Sunday, through today, I think, for the beta. Um, so, yeah, play, and it is open, so play whatever you can. <clears throat> it's about 40 gigs um, for the beta itself. But yeah, the closed beta um, so far seems to be, yeah, going well for Black Ops 6, uh, but we'll get more into that later. Um, but, yeah, reportedly Ubisoft has already laid off 10 people from the X Defiant team. The launch has been pretty rough. There's been uh, also issues with pushing out content. There's already been delays. This game was already delayed almost an entire year. And then, uh, you know, there's also been a lack of things to grind for in the game. It's been messy and it's been frustrating. There's been balancing things. They've spent a lot of time actually working and building up the game instead of actually giving out content. And so this hasn't been enough to keep players, including me, from coming back. I enjoy the game. I've I like playing the game. I've had some friends that have played it too. Um, and it's really nice not having skill-based matchmaking, but there's got to be stuff to do in the game. And what I find myself doing is like, wow, if they did it like this, like Call of Duty, if they did it like this, um, related with how COD does their maps or their skill, or, you know, or their uh, spawns or whatever. It's like we keep relating it back to COD and ultimately we're finding that COD is still doing it better. And now that we have the beta, we know what X Defiant is like and now we know kind of what to expect for also the Black Ops 6 game when it launches in October. And then we're also going to be able to basically, in a way, get it for free with uh, buy-in Game Pass Ultimate. It's still 20 bucks a month. Um, but, you know, there's cheaper ways to get it, like cdkeys.com or d2a.com. These aren't promotions. These are just sites that I use myself to get it for cheaper. But X Defiance had some real competition. 
Uh, and while, uh, you know, while they're the, technically the head of X Defiant running the whole show, said that, no, they're not a, necessarily a direct competitor, but they're trying to fill in the niche of people complaining about skill-based matchmaking and how it's messing up COD, it's messing up Battlefield, it's messing up other live service games. And so they, they wanted to do one without, and I do think it's good. I think it's great. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's apparently not enough. So they have until November to actually get things right, or they're probably going to just see maybe a total shutdown of their game, which would be insane. And uh, so, yeah, we'll see what happens. And, yeah, if F X Defiant isn't bad enough, Concord already is shutting down. That's already been all over the news and everything. And so basically after two weeks, Sony told about roughly 25,000 copies between PC and PlayStation 5. And then some of these games, too, they were becoming... Um, some of the game modes, they were becoming impossible to play because there weren't enough players, which is wild. You just wait in queue, and eventually you'd get kicked out because, you know, it's uh, you've been in there for too long. So September 6th is the official date when the servers will go offline. That was basically yesterday. I think that was yesterday. Anyway, it's, it's over now. And so uh, what's interesting, too, is... You know, Fireworks said that they're exploring other options uh, for their players, you know, thanking their players that actually played the game. Sony is giving full refunds to everybody. I believe if you have it through PlayStation, you're just going to get an automatic, um, automatic whatever, uh, refund for your game. Um, but then if you're on PC, I think you actually have to work through it through Steam and stuff like that. But yeah, it's just crazy. Like, I don't think I've ever seen a game like this that has started... And it's just been taken offline in two weeks. And this isn't like a small title or a, a small budget. I mean, this is like $150 million. Remember, Firewalk was bought by Sony for $200 million. Uh, this game is also eight years in development, pretty much following the trend of Overwatch. And, uh, man, this is, just, this is just brutal. This is a horrible failure. Um, and so what are they going to do? What is Sony going to do? I can't see Firewalk just moving to something else after eight years and not producing anything. And not just not producing something, but, like, not bringing any revenue whatsoever. The fact that there's no players at all for two weeks and they're like, yep, just shut it down, that is incredible to me, um, truly. And then, too, what does Sony have? There's, there's not a lot of stuff they got going for them. People aren't excited about Destiny 2. Been seeing some videos where they're ending playing Destiny altogether. They're just moving away from it. People, too, they're not excited for Marathon. Fair Games, that's another game that's coming that, you know, Sony bought Haven Studios for. And it's like, well, we're not excited for that either. That one actually looks worse. And while I do agree that maybe some people are overly critical um, or think they know a ton about a game before it even comes out, I think that's pretty arrogant, honestly. Um, none of these games, I have to agree, they really, you know, look that good. And then we have games that are coming out later in 2025 that people are excited for or are coming out on Nintendo. But PlayStation really doesn't have anything. And I think it's going to be a rough couple of years for Sony. PlayStation just doesn't have much. Like, their LEGO Horizons game, again, is not what we wanted. We don't have a Last of Us Part 3 or a Last of Us 2 or anything like that. We just don't have any of those type of titles that are really coming. Um, lately, we have Judas, Marathon. Um, we have uh, Silent Hill 2 Remake, which actually looks pretty good. We'll get into that later in the show. Um, and then we also have Until Dawn, but that's also in the sh later in the show, too. we also got to talk about that. But this is just going to be... Cal, this is just going to be really tough. I mean, Spider-Man 2... Um, is also finally profitable um, with selling about roughly 10 million copies. Congratulations, it's finally profitable. But again, like, you only sold 25,000 copies? Like, that is crazy. And two people with Concord, apparently there was an anime show that was going to be coming out. There was a controller, custom unique controller that was like 100 bucks or whatever for the PlayStation 5. Um, and some other things that were going to be coming out. I mean, they were expecting this to be a really big game for Concord, and it's just not, it just didn't happen, unfortunately. Um, that is massive loss, and they got to really put a lot of plans on hold. But this has also made some of the value of some of the physical stuff actually go up. So, like, the controller that was 100 bucks, well, try 500 bucks. Or 400 bucks now. Uh, also, a physical game of Concord sealed is like $100 
um, which is almost three times the value. So like eBay is going insane with some of this. And while I think it's interesting or maybe you're holding a piece of history, I don't think really overall the value is going to keep going up because, again, it wasn't good. Like most people aren't going to really go for something um, that wasn't a good product. So, good, you know, good luck to those buying in. Hopefully you do make it uh, make it big later. But, uh, but, yeah, this is insane. And, yeah, with those 25,000 copies, it was roughly about a million dollars is what they made. I mean, they didn't even make 1% of the total cost of the game. Uh, it's just insane. It's just insane. And, too, with budgets getting so big, like Spider-Man 2 being $312, $315 million, Sony's looking to pair that back. But even if you cut that in half, and you have a game that's just not very enticing, that looks like a copy of other things, it doesn't really have an identity outside of itself, and, and two, it doesn't really look interesting, especially, you know, 5v5. It's like, oh, my word, we already have a ton of that. Same with X-Defiant as well. That's 6v6. And it's like, eh, it's not enough. It's unfortunately not enough. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a tough sell, I think, for a lot of games going forward, um, if, especially with these big budgets. They really have to put out. And with people having less money now, um, we got to be more choosy about what we buy. So there's just less future money coming into the industry and a lot of these big projects that are still pushing out. But we've had a ton of failures, a ton of failures just this year. Um, and we still have four months left of the year. I'm going to do a state of gaming on it later when my audio's cooperating with me on Twitch. But it's just incredible. It's just incredible the amount of garbage we've been kept, you know, shoving out there. And part of me wishes I could buy it so I could actually show it for you guys. But, uh, yeah, it's just insane. So let's go ahead and get on to the next story. And Otreya is a game that's been in the works, basically about ready to actually be released. Um, yet it's an indefinite delay on Xbox. Why is that? Well, this is a game that's going to be like a Souls-like game. Again, From Software has made that own genre very popular now. A lot of people playing off of it. And we've had quite a few games coming out in the last three years to kind of follow along after Elden Ring um, or the Dark Souls games coming back and stuff. Like, you can still play and find people to play with the Dark Souls remaster or Dark Souls 2 and 3 and still play with folks on there. Even Bloodborne, if you're still playing um, on PlayStation 4. So it's pretty incredible. Um, but, uh, yeah, the whole thing with uh, Enotrea is that Xbox hasn't contacted this small studio back in two months. And that's according to the, to the CEO. The studio has made the Xbox port, basically, to show, hey, to see if they meet all of these standards for Xbox so they can actually put the game on the console. And Xbox hasn't been uh, doing anything. And the studio, too... Um, said that they've had someone in contact with them just at the start, but now there's just it's just dead air. So what exactly is going on? Because this isn't just necessarily their issue. Best Buy, Target, other companies, they basically have, you know, Inotrea for Xbox on pre-order, and uh, that's kind of an issue. And the release date is to, you know, to be announced, but... Um, but yeah, it's just like, what in the world is going on? So we finally had uh, uh, an update to this throughout the week, is that Xbox finally got back to them um, and said, oh, sorry, you know, basically, hey, let's work with you, let's get this ball rolling. But like, Xbox can't be doing this. They can't be dropping the ball on even small games like this. And I know they had a busy month or whatever in August. They had Gamescom. They had other games they were talking about. They were working with other devs. And they have over 2,000 partnerships um, between different studios and publishers, which is a ton. Um, they're a huge powerhouse, but yeah, you can't be dropping the ball like this. Um, especially when you're a big company like Nintendo, Sony, or Xbox. You, you really need to be putting your best foot forward all the time, and there's a level of expectation there. And it's just plain rude if you've started communicating with somebody like this, and and then you just have no communication whatsoever for two months. So <coughs> apparently the studio, you know, the CEO just needed to complain about it publicly, uh, and sometimes that's what's necessary in order to grab the attention um, to be able to progress and move forward uh, with whatever your project is or whatever you're doing. But yes, Xbox can't keep doing this. 
Um, they, they've, you know, had some other issues, too, with saying one thing and something else happens. Now, I do think it is partly Xbox versus Microsoft, and they're not necessarily seeing eye to eye. And I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the decade or even sooner than that, we actually see Phil Spencer being removed and replaced by somebody else. Um, and while some people might actually think that's a good thing, I actually worry about that because Spencer is one of us folks. He's a gamer just like us. He plays video games when he has time. He has an account. You know, and he plays, and he understands some of what we go through. What we don't need is a Ryan, and that's ultimately what I'm afraid of, is, you know, Ryan at Sony before he, quote, retired um, after <laughs> finding out that Destiny 2 was blowing up and, and had 45% less revenue than the year before, and they canceled six out of their 12 live service games, and the live service games they've been putting out so far are basically garbage, and, um, but yeah, well, I don't want a Ryan, you know, I don't want a business suit trying to run the company while that has to be an aspect of it. Of course, I want to have a gamer that's helping run the business and it has a lot of input. And, and I think, uh, Xbox has really benefited from that. Um, cause otherwise it definitely could have gone a heck of a lot worse, uh, than it's gone already. So we'll see what Xbox does. They're really pushing that Game Pass, and we'll honestly see if it pays off. And I think a lot of it is going to kick off maybe by next year. We'll really see next year if it'll fail or not. So, yeah, we'll have to see. Let's continue on. Uh, let's see, Visions of Mana. So this game was literally just coming coming out, and um, literally the day it was basically released, we found out that the studio was shutting down in Tokyo. And, uh, you know, they're officially owned by NetEase, a Chinese company. And, uh, but yeah, they're laying off just about everybody except for a few positions for post-launch for the game. And, um, yeah, the release date was August 29th, and everybody finds out they're basically being let go. And this studio in Tokyo, um, I forget the name, but they were opened in 2020. And, yeah, they, they haven't even made it five years, and they're already done. And two, it finds it seems too that the visions of mana um, sales also aren't doing very well. So maybe they already had an inkling of that because of lack of pre-orders. Maybe, I mean, we'll yeah, we'll have to see if that data ever comes out. But, um, but yeah, it's just awful. Like there's just another studio uh, that's getting closed out basically uh, at launch. Like this is wild at flip and launch, and. Uh, yeah, it's it's just getting brutal out there for a lot of folks, um, you know, developers included. They're the one that put heart and soul into these games, grind it out and stuff, and the CEOs seem a lot of times to actually get scot-free. Um, luckily, not all of them, um, but the the big dogs are the ones making the decisions, and the little guys are paying for it. And I feel a little bit of that even at my own job. And we can all have our own, you know, discussions and disagreements, too, with jobs and just rah, 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 just rant about it. Um, but, yeah, it is tough when you lose your job, especially when the economy seems to be doing worse. I mean, our unemployment's going up, our GDP is being revised down, the amount of jobs created are um, going down, job openings are going down. Um, and this isn't just in the, you know, gamer space, the gaming industry space. This is just every single space out there. And so, yeah, if if you have a job, boy, do whatever you can to hold on to it because it is getting worse out there for a lot of people. Um, every passing couple of months, I hear more people that got laid off or can't find a job um, or, like, unemployment is now run out and what are they going to do? So, yeah, just be aware and just keep just keep grinding, folks. It's brutal, uh, but don't give up. Next, we got to hear about Rocksteady as well. So they made, you know, wonderful games, you know, like the Arkham Knight um, trilogy, uh, but now, uh, you know, they made Kill the Justice League, Suicide Squad, right? We all remember that back in February that finally launched this year. Um, but yeah, they're having layoffs too now. So they're losing half of their QA team, some of the junior members, junior members, and then a few ha have also been there roughly five, six years. So they're using, losing some of the mid-tier members too. Um, but yeah, Suicide Squad was just a game that just utterly failed again. Like, they will never make that money back. And um, this is why they're having the studio now work on basically making a remaster or like a super fancy edition for um, Hogwarts Legacy. But I don't really see how that's going to work out for them very well because you're releasing the same game 
with a little bit of extra content um, on the same generation of console. And so you're not really providing a lot of extra value there to even sell it for like 40 bucks. And I'm sure it's going to be more than that. I'm sure it's going to be more like 50 or $60 is what they're going to be looking for. And again, they're just chasing, trying to put more money on the table, and that is just the wrong way to go about it. So um, Rocksteady has started and pitched their next game that they'd like to do, which would be story-driven, hopefully getting away from live service. Um, and personally, I think this would be likely for next-gen consoles, because we really don't have too much longer. we got about four years, maybe a little less than that. And um, yeah, this game would basically be for maybe a launch title. So we'll see what happens. I'll keep you guys updated. Let's talk about Capcom. Um, I'm going to mess up the name, and I apologize. But Hedeko Itsudo is now leaving Capcom after 30 years. So he's still going to be working on games. He's still going to his own project that he's going to be working on. But he's just ready to work on something new. I think he's getting too close to the end of his uh, you know, total career until retirement, and maybe he wants to make one or two more games of what he'd really like to focus on instead of having the reins from a big publisher. Uh, but yeah, they're going to start development actually this month in 2024. And so that'll be, uh, we'll, yeah, we'll have to see what he does. He's been the director for Dragon's Dogma and Devil May Cry, and um, he's been with the company since 1994. Wow. I was four years old then. That's insane. So to think that he's been there that long. And, uh, yeah, he's still got a few more games in him. So we'll have to see what happens. Let's talk about the MetaQuest. Uh, we haven't heard about Metaverse, MetaQuest, all that for a while. And so how's it doing? Well, they're expanding it to consoles. Woohoo! So that's kind of cool. You might be able to use it actually with your current console. But the problem is that there's a catch. Isn't there always? There is... <laughs> Excuse me. There is always... A flip and catch. Um, so, you got to have an HDMI link that allows you to use the headset, um, and it sets it at 1080p at 60 hertz, so no 4K. And basically, it's a digital screen that you sit in front of to play your game or to watch your video or your show. So it's not really amazing, right? Um, but you'll need to. Uh, the, the worst thing is that you'll actually need a capture card. <laughs> Um, to be able to do this, be able to use it. And so that's just more money, that's more cables. And Metaverse, MetaQuest, they've been trying to make money from this thing. Again, we talked about them basically sinking $45 billion and just lighting it on fire of trying to make this Metaverse Quest thing. And it's just it's just not working out. Now they're trying to expand to consoles. But again, if like if I want a fairly good capture card, i got to spend like 60 a 100 bucks to actually do that. Um, and then again, I'm just sitting in front of a digital screen at 1080p at 60 hertz, and uh, that's not really enticing. You know, we already had that with the previous generation, with the Project Morpheus for the original PSVR, and it's just not enough, unfortunately. It's just not enough. I don't think it's going to go very well, but I think they're going to continue to keep burning money. Eventually, they have to really start making money from the metaverse. And with the recession and stuff and how most of us are feeling that, I just don't see that happening. So, good luck. Next, let's talk about Ballistic Moon. They've been making the Until Dawn uh, remaster. This will be coming out October 4th. And they're already having layoffs, too. <laughs> it's not even freaking out yet, and they're already having layoffs. So, we don't know how many yet. Um, but I'm surprised because they've been working on this for a while. It's been announced. We know when the release date is, and it's pretty confirmed because we're like a month away now. But um, maybe they're already expecting pretty weak numbers. Personally, I'm not excited about it. Um, but uh, but again, it's more like people are more excited for Astrobot or more games coming out next year. Yeah, until Dawn Remaster, it's like, man, you're remastering something that really isn't that old. Um, and was kind of a niche audience anyway. And again, it just feels like a money grab. And so, yeah, we're already having layoffs with Ballistic Moon. They've just said with the future of their company, they're seeing the writing on the wall, and they just can't keep it going. So, yeah, they got to have layoffs. And, uh, yeah, this sucks. Um, there'll be new... Uh, let's see... But yeah, Sony lately, they've just been slashing devs. Uh, Sony does have some um, new leadership making their presence known, but like it kind of all started with canceling games and layoffs at Bungie. Multiple layoffs now. Um, and even layoffs within 
different aspects of Sony too. But yeah, their Sony's big child now is PlayStation. Um, it generates about half of their total revenue for the entire company, and uh, good gravy. I mean, they're just not doing very good. And now we got another game that's going to come out and just kind of. Uh, I'm sure some people will buy it, or maybe have never played it, um, and they'll buy it and and play the game while they're waiting for something else to come out. But um, yeah, everybody. It just seems like everything is just cut and cut right now. And you know, Moon has stated they already um, can't make it regardless of whatever the sales are. So yeah, the costs are just too high um, for the revenue that they have coming in. And again, this was another studio that was founded in 2020 by an ex Supermassive folks um, or ex folks from Supermassive Games. And uh, again, yeah, if the studio still cannot continue to perform in the coming years, they might eventually just be closed down too. So let's talk about a new movie. Uh, unfortunately, this is a trend that I think has really taken off, but um, I don't think it's going to be overly successful in most cases. But we have a trailer for the new Minecraft movie. Now, this was a teaser trailer, but it already, in my opinion, really doesn't look good. I was curious. I looked into the optics a little bit. This is $150 million. This movie has actually been delayed already for a year and they've had to do reshoots and other stuff like that. And again, it, it just the teaser trailer does not look good. I would rather play the game than watch a movie on the game um, in most cases. But the director is Jared Hess. He did Napoleon Dynamite and Nacho Libre. Both of those are um, pretty good titles. So you, the humor you would hope would be pretty good. At least the directing would be pretty good. Uh, but the screenwriters are Chris Bowman and Hubble Palmer. They both did Masterminds. Middle School, Worst Years of My Life, and 95 Senses, and most of us have probably never heard of those. So I'm a little worried about that. Uh, the main stars in the film are going to be Jack Black and Jason Momoa, and um, we got a really bad joke from Jack Black and that just fell flat, you know, I am Steve. And it's like, okay, where's the punchline? Like, you're totally missing it. I almost felt like I was watching Borderlands again. Um, the movie, and uh, it just doesn't look good. And then Jason Momoa really doesn't have any lines much at all whatsoever. He's also wearing a massive wig and wearing pink. So a whole side of the demographic isn't going to like that very much either. Um, they're probably not going to focus. And this too, Minecraft was also supposed to be just Netflix, but now this is actually going to be coming out to theater. So I think they already know that this isn't as going to isn't going to do as well as they're hoping for. And so now they're like, well, let's expand the audience. Let's let's catch as many people as we can because not everybody has Netflix. And so, yeah, they're going to put it out to theaters too in April. And I will be watching it for you guys and doing a review just like I did for Borderlands um, and roughly anything else that I can see in theaters. But uh, again, this just really doesn't look good. We have no idea what the plot is. They're doing a lot of... Um, What's the word? They're doing a lot of fan service to the game uh, through the movie, which, you know, wonderful. But again, it's like, why do I want to watch this movie? It just looks uh, horrible. The Screen Culture Channel, they did a trailer about a year ago, and it honestly looks better. In the actual teaser trailer, if you uh, haven't seen it yourself, go to Screen Culture on YouTube and look for the... Minecraft trailer again. It was about a year ago. And uh, yeah, I'd rather watch something like that. But good gravy. It's just the current trailer that we got focuses a lot on mobs being goofy and funny and just, um, you know, jokes that just again fall flat. It just feels like another Borderlands almost. Um, and we know too that the production had some issues. Again, it was delayed about um, a, a year or a couple of years, but they've been in production since 2016. They've been doing this a long, long time. So, you know, the lockdowns and stuff, that didn't help either, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, yeah, this will be April 5th. <laughs> oh, man, I can't wait to watch it for you folks. All right, let's talk about something more interesting. So Space Marine 2. So the embargo's been lifted. We've had early access now. And I think you can actually buy the game today. Uh, or maybe Monday, but uh, yeah, the embargo's been lifted, and there's a lot of good about the game. Again, the base game is 60 bucks. If you want to pay more for it on top of that, that's great, but um, it's been really good for 
the combat, the feel, the immersiveness, the campaign is really fun. The AI are actually doing their job in the game, which is really rare in most cases. But they're doing executions. They're actually saving you from getting attacked or getting beaten. The hordes uh, are an upgraded engine of what World War Z had. And so, yeah, it looks really good. It plays really well. Um, the game isn't super buggy or janky. PC players are having a little bit of crashing, um, but it's not horrible. Um, <laughs> not like Star Wars Outlaws with PlayStation folks. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's been doing actually really good. Um, the issue, though, is that the dev said the campaign was roughly 10 to 12 hours, and people are beating it in under six so this is kind of an issue, um, and I want to get this out there before people really buy it. If people, you know, they, they do a great job of the fan service um, and all of that, but I want to indicate that, you know, for $60, six hours of campaign is kind of small. We still don't have the multiplayer yet. That's coming. Um, and we still don't have the other six operations either. Um, we currently have six, but we're going to be getting six more. So think about it, folks. I just want you guys to be aware Again, wonderful game. This will probably be in the running for Game of the Year, in my opinion, um, and also for some awards. But, uh, but yeah, it is a very small campaign. So digging into this a little more, um, we had Space Marine 1. That was just you. No AI bots, no co-op, nothing like that. Space Marine 1 was back in 2011, and that was roughly about 7 hours. So it's roughly about the same size. Um, but again, this was a cheaper game, too. Um, we do have the co-op operations, where you're a second team of Space Marines, not the original group in the campaign, but a second group, basically running alongside on different missions, heading ultimately toward the same goal on the same planet, same area. And yeah, we have six of these, and they feel like like Dark Tide missions. Um, and these are roughly about 30 minutes um, to do, and... Uh, Many of the devs, you know, they've been including the operations and the campaign. Maybe maybe that's what they're doing when they say 10 to 12 hours. They mean the campaign and doing all of the operations is, is 10 to 12 hours. Um, just trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. I hope they really didn't mean just the entire campaign by itself. Cause, because, yeah, no, I don't think anybody is really hitting that. Um, get the, but, yeah, the gameplay is really good. It meets or exceeds expectations for a lot of people. People that also haven't really played any Warhammer 40k games are starting to become fans because of this game. So yeah, it's doing a wonderful job. Um, but it might just be a little short. So, you know, make the decision for yourself on whether you want to try it now or or maybe wait for a sale later. Especially if you're not really interested in the PvP side of it. Um, you're more just interested in campaign and the actual operations. Maybe just wait for a cheaper price tag. Maybe wait for Black Friday. That's in a few months. Or maybe around Christmas. Or maybe, you know, New Year's sale. I mean, they usually do that for basically two months in a row. I mean, we have Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Christmas, holiday season, whatever, New Year's. I mean, they just keep it going for like two months straight. So I'm sure there's going to be a sale in there somewhere. Um... And a lot of the embargoes, you know, with people playing it and releasing their reviews, uh, there weren't any servers available for PvP, so we don't really get to see that side. Probably now we do, because people are probably streaming it on Twitch. But yeah, I just wanted to talk about the game in detail a little bit and just let you guys know that, hey, if you're okay with spending whatever amount of money today just for a shorter campaign than maybe what we expected. Hey, knock yourself out. It's your money. But for those of you where money's a little tight and you want to make sure you're getting a good game, maybe if that would make you kind of hesitant to buy the game at full price but wait for a sale, you know, hey, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you, inform you, and make those, help, you know, help you make those decisions. So we will also be getting four updates later in four seasons, um, and those will be coming after launch. Again, we'll get... The multiplayer will get the six other operations. There'll be other cosmetics to grind for in the game. Um, so, yeah, that'll be pretty good. We'll also be getting a horde mode as well. Which, uh, yeah, that'll be honest, That'd be pretty fun, honestly. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to bring that to your guys' attention. But, yeah, so far it's selling really, really well. And it's, uh, yeah, its numbers are going great. It's in the 80s, I think. Um, and, yeah, people are really enjoying it. At least last I saw it was in the 80s.
So yeah, it's a really good game. Capcom, let's talk about them again. They're bringing Marvel vs. Capcom and Capcom Fighter Game Collection 2 to Xbox. So, you know, this came out for PlayStation and also on PC, but, you know, originally they skipped the Xbox One. This is going back a generation, by the way, folks. But this originally skipped Xbox One because of technical issues, and they couldn't get them fixed in time, so they just shelved it and put it on hold. Um, but these are actually still coming out technically for Xbox One. These are not Series X games, um, but they will be backwards compatible on the Series X. So if you're interested in these games from roughly, you know, 10-ish years ago, Marvel vs. Capcom and Capcom Fighting Game Collection 2, they will be coming, and you can play them on Series X. They will be part of that backwards compatibility list. This kind of reminds me, too, of, like, Sarah Bond came out earlier this year and was talking about that they actually have a backwards compatibility team that they've built to continue to move the legacy forward and expand the legacy of Xbox games. And maybe this is partly of what she meant. So, yeah, again, there will be no Series X port. Um, it would take time to remake the entire game, and they're not going to do that. The studio is working on other projects. But I really feel like it, Xbox, you know, why I bring this up is Xbox needs to make their ease of access better for publishers and developers to actually bring their games to Xbox. The Xbox One had issues for games like Bloodborne. From Software said, look, it won't run on the Xbox One. Sorry, we can't bring Bloodborne, and that's why Bloodborne is still on PlayStation. And it will probably never come over to, uh, to Xbox. Bloodborne is one of the biggest exclusives that they ever sold. So why would they get rid of that? Also, Marvel vs. Capcom, same thing, technical issues. Um, the series X and S has had issues with the S holding them back. Like Baldur's Gate 3, that was a mess. There were also a lot more issues happening with um, with uh, Cyberpunk 2077. And then there's been some other studios, too, that have said, look, it the S is a problem. It's, it's a little bit weaker, and to make a game that works for both the X and the S is just incredibly difficult. It's just a mess. So, in my opinion, Xbox never should have had a cheaper version of... Um, they should have, uh, well, my idea ultimately for next gen for everybody is just get rid of the refresh, get rid of all of the extra consoles, get rid of updating, making a whole new console just to upgrade the SSD and storage space, right? Just make it to where you have a base console, right? One model for 10 years and you can put in the hard drive. You can expand the storage space. You can double it or triple it or, or quadruple it even. Um, you can upgrade the RAM. You can upgrade the cooling fans. Like, you can upgrade all of this stuff and make it more like a PC. Um, and instead of having to sell your old one and buy a brand new console, you can just buy the components and piecemeal it when you have the cash. I think that would be a lot more... Um, a, a lot more better for people is uh, just be able to do that instead of having to buy a whole new console and worry about transferring data and accounts and all of this stuff. Instead, you just have the entire console. I think that would be great. For data and whatever, you would still have to have a transfer process for your hard drive. But again, there would be a way kind of around that. Like if you had a card slot in the back, you could shove everything over there. And then you could take out your hard drive, put in a new one that's already got everything you need from Xbox on it. So you can just plug and play, and then you can transfer all your games back and, and your account too. But yeah, there's got to be a way for them to make things easier because they've been having issues with all of their consoles since the 360. And um, yeah, there's got to be, this is partly why, in my opinion, I think Xbox has half of the sales. Um, even less than that now than PlayStation does because PlayStation has built the reputation of their console being better than Xbox. And they've been able to back it up. And, yeah, Xbox isn't focused on consoles anymore, and I think that could hurt them. Now they're still going to continue to make a Xbox consoles in the future. They have confirmed that, um, I believe, through Gamescom or through, I forget what the other thing was that was out earlier this month, but, uh, yeah, I, th I think, too, they just... Xbox needs to do a better job of make it e making it easier 
for their consumers and for the third-party developers. Because if they don't get this right, it's really going to hurt Game Pass in the long run. Right now, Game Pass is doing pretty good. They got roughly 35 million people that are paying for Game Pass right now, Ultimate. And, um, well, Game Pass PC, Game Pass Ultimate at least. And that's wonderful. You know, that's that's great. Um, but yeah, if they want to keep that, they need to they, they need to stop letting some of this stuff fall through the cracks, including like in Otreya, you know, the game, the developers have been frustrated. The game's ready to present to the company, to Xbox, and Xbox just hasn't had a word for two months, which is, in my opinion, that's unacceptable. Um, and I would tell them so. It's like, look, I don't care if you're a $3 trillion company with all of your equity and stocks and whatever. It's like, you actually need to be a business. Like, this is inexcusable. So don't do it again. I know we're a small company, but it's like, your reputation is in the balance. And if it's crappy, why are we going to keep trying to put it on Xbox? It's a really good question. Let's talk about Star Wars Outlaws. Okay, so this was expected to sell... Um, oh, excuse me. Star Wars Outlaws is expected to sell 40% less than originally thought. And boy, is that painful. That is painful. Ubisoft had an earnings call, and they lowered guidance basically on how much money they're going to make for the quarter. And the big thing that's coming out this quarter is Star Wars Outlaws, and they worked it down from $650 million down to $500 million. And so, running the math, um, we had somebody at Barclays that were expecting roughly 8 million units sold, but now with the new numbers and forward guidance from the earnings call from Ubisoft, now we're looking at about 5 million units sold. And it might even be less than that. So, 5 million units would still likely make the game profitable, but not a win. Not the not the win that Ubisoft is looking for. I also learned too that a uh, the dev budget was a minimum of thirty percent more, basically a hundred and thirty percent minimum of Assassin's Creed Mirage. So this game was actually pretty expensive. Um, also, Star Wars Outlaws has had the largest marketing campaign um, ever for any Ubi game. So all of the divisions, all of the Far Cries. I mean, you name it. It has been a uh, more costly for the company to actually market this game for Star Wars Outlaws, and we've seen <coughs> we've seen trailers for it forever, over a year. Uh, we've seen plenty of ads too through YouTube and TikTok and Facebook and whatever. I mean, it, even on the Xbox home screen, for Pete's sakes, um, it has literally been everywhere. And so, yeah, the marketing campaign has been huge, and. I think they will do a little better than break even. Um, but yeah, again, it's not the banger they were hoping for. I also don't believe Sh Assassin's Creed Shadows will do very well either. I still think it will um, break even, uh, maybe even do a little better than that. But Star Wars was one of the biggest brands ever. Star Wars is huge. I mean, it's been around since 78, folks, and that took, like, the nerds by storm, right? And it's just branched to tons of other stuff and... Um, but yeah, if you can't sell Star Wars, what makes you think that you can sell Assassin's Creed? A smaller brand. People that identify less with, that that don't know anything, you know, about Assassin's Creed. There's plenty of them out there. And so yeah, if they're not able to sell Star Wars, how are they going to sell Assassin's Creed Shadows later this year in November? I am very curious. I'm also planning to, to uh, take some time with... Star Wars Outlaws. I did Ubisoft Plus for a month, and uh, I I've put out a couple of initial looks. Um, right now, I'm actually working to get to space combat and stuff, so we can actually see what that's like, and then I'll have my final review and all that jazz um, of Assassins or uh, of Star Wars Outlaws. But yeah, Star Wars Outlaws overall has been a pretty big disappointment. I gotta say, I'm giving it like a five out of ten right now. There's some bugs, there's some crashes, there's some things that they do really, really well, um, and I love it. Uh, and then other aspects, it's just like, wow, why didn't they do this? Why isn't this in here? Why did they do it this way? Um, and yeah, it's just not the type of game I was hoping for. Now, I did kind of expect it. Again, it's an Ubisoft game. Um, they kind of have their own style, if you will. Uh, but yeah, again, it's, it's going to be a miss for them and not a win. And then, yeah, looking at Assassin's Creed Shadows, I'll buy Ubisoft Plus again, just so I can play that for about a month or so, 
and I'll let you know how it is. I mean, we'll show it right here, kind of do more in-depth stuff. Um, we'll have short reviews uh, that are just, you know, 60 seconds or less, and then we'll have kind of like a big final review at the end, um, at the end of the month. But yeah, it's just been kind of a bummer. We've we've had three, three games now that have come out this year on Star Wars. Last year, we found out, too, that KOTOR Remake is kind of up in the air, like what's going on, and hopefully Star Wars Outlaws was going to be a big one. And, uh, yeah, it's just not the case. So let's talk about the Black Ops 6 beta. We're almost done with the news, folks. This is going on pretty long, I think, but uh, bringing it to you live right here, basically every week. Black Ops 6 beta so far, um, it has me excited for the game. Um, I'm still a little cautious, but I'm more optimistic than I have been since Cold War, honestly. Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, Vanguard, I didn't like any of those. Um, and I just feel like it's just progressively gotten worse. Modern Warfare 2 was okay, but again, how they changed things after, like, month 4, month 5, I didn't really enjoy for the multiplayer. The campaign was pretty good. Um, and then, you know, too, we also had Vanguard in there. And again, Vanguard was another game where it's like the campaign was okay, it was fairly fun for what it was, but then the multiplayer was just super frustrating and broken with, um, with, uh, blueprint guns, which was awful. And then Modern Warfare 3, again, was a DLC of a game made into a full release, and we all know how that turned out. And I have that, too, also on my channel. And so, uh, yeah, the Black Ops 6 beta, I'm actually pretty excited about this. I want to go back and play the Cold War campaign so I can be caught up with the story because it's going to take off right off of that. We're also getting our original kind of, like, round level design for zombies and then the multiplayer so far has been pretty good and one of the bigger changes is omni movement it's fun it allows some more realistic movement on the field overall um but i don't think it's going to be the the be all for everybody um i've seen some videos that are showing you some video right but that's a real small snippet of actual gameplay and most people are still just sliding all over the place right um trying to get kills and whatever or trying to camp trying to snipe all that like it is still a cod game it still plays like a cod game it's like it's not like omni movement has totally changed everything okay it still feels the same right Skill-based matchmaking is still very much alive i got to experience that on day two uh, and most of the maps are fairly good um, some of them are awful, but hey, there will always be some awful ones in a multiplayer map. Some we jive with, some we don't. But yeah, I have a full review already that will be linked in the description, and you guys can check out the first week. I will also have another review for the second week, uh, which I'll be putting that up um, probably later this week, honestly, if uh, Twitch allows it. But yeah, overall, I'm fairly excited um, for Black Ops 6, and I'll be showing that here on the channel. I did, too, want to talk about Black Myth Wukong. Um, we found out through some news sources that maybe the studio is lying about, you know, technical issues with Xbox. Which it's like, well, what is it then? Um, we've been hearing through IGN and through several other sources that have, I guess, supposedly independently confirmed that it's actually a PlayStation exclusive. Like a timed exclusive. So, which is it? Um, we still know that Xbox is going to get their port of Black Myth Wukong, but it'll be later. And, uh, but who's lying? Because there's no way this is both. Are they having technical issues? Maybe. Um, or is it timed exclusive? Or were they having technical issues? And maybe we're like, hey, we can do a timed exclusive, Sony. You want to take that deal? So, which is it? I'm actually kind of curious because this would be the first time we've had that blatant of a lie in a long time from a studio putting out a double A game um, and making up a story. So I don't know. I don't have my mind made up yet. I want to see more information. Um, but again, I don't understand why they would lie about this. Um, there's omitting certain truths. Okay, that happens a lot in the gaming industry, but just to blatantly lie about something like that, it's not a good look. So I'll be, I'll be keeping my feelers on this one. Uh, and uh, when I find out something more concrete, I will let you guys know. 
Okay, we're almost there. Silent Hill 2 remake. Honestly, it's starting to look pretty good. And it might actually be one of the most immersive games that we've had in a long time. And so what I mean by that is that you can completely turn off the entire HUD. And instead, you'll still get cues directly from your character that you're playing the protagonist by sounds, the protagonist turning their head or making some kind of a little gesture, indication, and facial expressions. And so this is actually pretty cool. I mean, if you want to get completely immersive, you can actually do that. And this is honestly, too, kind of what old games had to do back then. You had to hear, use cues for sounds or motions or something like that in some of the older games, because again, you wanted to actually build the game, and we didn't have the crazy HUDs we have today because of the partly the technology. The older generations back then you know, while they could have a HUD, it couldn't be this insane amount of wealth of information like an Ubisoft game. Um, and yeah, going back to Silent Hill 2, the original, yeah, there honestly wasn't very much of a HUD. It was pretty minimal. And if we're going back to the original Silent Hill 1, for PlayStation 1, there's basically no HUD at all. So, not much of one. But yeah, I think this is really cool. I think it's really fun. Again, we're seeing this too in Star Wars Outlaws and other games. Uh, even in Starfield with updates, is that sky is the limit on kind of how you want to do your HUD, how immersive you want to make it um, uh, with all of your indica indicators and information or lack thereof. And I think it's cool that the studios and developers, um, they're, they're, uh, they're making games this way so that you can play how you'd like to play. And maybe that's kind of unsungly the next thing that they're going to do is just allow as many options as possible so that people can play how they want and have the most catered experience so that everybody can enjoy the game instead of uh you know instead of just having the same experience that's a mess with bugs and whatever because if you can actually have fun with the game it, it's it's a lot more enjoyable right and i wonder if this is one of the ways of how they're trying to do it of creating all of these different options and HUD options uh, in order to just have fun with the game with with what's fun for you. And I think that's cool. Instead of just having a standard, it's an Ubisoft game, here's all your stuff, you can now just kind of cater to exactly what you want. And that's really neat. we got to talk about Starfield. Uh, there's going to be a pretty big Star Wars mod coming out. And actually, it's out right now. This is, of course, PC only. Um, this is why, too, I saved it toward the end. Um, but Star Wars Genesis is going to be a huge mod. Uh, the full mod list is quite extensive. I'm just going to read some of it here, but you're going to have a complete soundtrack and music that's completely redone for the game. There's going to be a full conversion of all factions and sub-factions. There's going to be a complete conversion of all weapons, spacesuits, alien races, ships. Like, they're completely redoing everything in the game. There's going to be notable planets, like Tatooine, right? Notable locations. Um, there's going to be a lot of dialogue is going to be rewritten, too, for the game. Third-person combat is going to be revamped. Um, we even have, the, of course, the Millennium Falcon ship, which is awesome. We have dynamic weather. There's an active war between Empire and Rebel NPCs. So if they ever mix, they're going to engage, right? And you get to see that happen. And there's an extensive full list on GitHub if you want to take a look at it. There's also a list of requirements that you need um, for Steam and all that, and also an install guide. And so that'll be all on GitHub. Um, you can type that into your search bar pretty quick and find it all. And if you're interested, there it is. But I think it's really cool that we're getting a true, like, Star Wars mod, a Star Wars game, if you will, for Starfield. I just wish it was coming to console, because I would totally download it. Um, but two, this is pretty big. This mod's like 100 gigs. Because again, it's completely redoing the game. So it's taking the foundation of the game code and putting a whole different skin on it uh, in 4K and all that. And so yeah, it's a huge amount of space. Uh, don't forget to have some room for it. Lastly, uh, Sony needs more exclusive IPs, apparently, uh, to broaden and to become a full global entertainment company. There's an interview done with the financial director. I can't pronounce his name. Um, and they're saying that they want to have more new and creative IPs for TV, movies, and anime, along with games and merchandising and all of that. And so my curiosity is, 
why can't they use the old ones? They're there. You know, instead they're trying to make buy Concord, they're trying to buy Bungie with Destiny and Marathon, and, you know, they bought Haven for fair games, but it's like, why can't they just use the old stuff? It's there, and we've talked about this before on the channel. They are sitting, I think, on the biggest unused pile of a of IPs ever of any company. It is unbelievable. They have Colony Wars. They have G-Police. They have SOCOM. They have God of War. Jet Moto, Siphon Filter, Sly Cooper, Twisted Metal, Jack and Dexter, Kill Zone. And that is just to mention a few. It's crazy how many IPs they're sitting on. Well, my kids were just watching a playthrough on YouTube of Ratchet and Clank today. And I'm thinking, as I'm watching, I was like, oh, yeah, there's this. And, oh, yeah, that was cool, too, back then. I like, I want to play these. I want to play these games. And uh, they're just not bringing them back. They could totally do entire remaster collections, allow anybody to buy them. They could even port them over to Nintendo. I mean, who hasn't played some of these old titles? We didn't have a lot of choices back then compared to today. Indie games were basically non-existent. And uh, we only had basically three companies. We had Sony, Xbox, and Nintendo. And they were making games. And... Of course, it's branched out a lot more now into that, but we have just for just for Xbox alone this year, there's like f over 500 AA or AAA titles coming out. Just for 2024, over 500. Like, you can't even play them all, not even lo alone hear them all. It's impossible. But, you know, back then we didn't have a ton of a ton of games, and I feel like we're almost maybe ratcheting up to get back to the 70s again. And to where, you know, in the early 80s, we had that really, really big crash that luckily the NES got us out of in 85. But yeah, lately it's just, there's a ton of options out there, but it's like Sony has these old IPs. Why don't they freaking use them? Because they're they're there. Again, they could remaster all of this stuff. They could kind of modernize, not what I mean, folks, but they could kind of tweak and adjust of what we expect games to play like, what HUDs are like, controls, right? They can modernize some of that stuff and make new iterations or even mesh some of these together. I think that'd be interesting. What if Ratchet and Clank met Jack and Dexter? And what if there's a whole story there and you can like switch between characters or you can have like two different storylines of trying to ultimately work toward the same goal um, and you can play as Ratchet and Clank and you can play as Jack and Dexter with some like multiverse whatever. Um, and they would probably make sales. I mean, the last Ratchet and Clank game that they made, Rift Apart, actually sold really well. I mean, it made them like $620 million. Um, you know, uh, gross, of course. Uh, but yeah, it, it actually sold pretty well. And, uh, well, maybe not quite that much. But anyway, it was in the hundreds of millions. It was, it was really impressive. It was way more than most of us thought. And we got to see that during the Insomniac hack. Um, earlier this year. Maybe that was last year now, but instead it sounds like they just want to create brand new IPs, and we already know how that's going for everybody. This is why Nintendo is ultimately winning, because they're just sticking with what's working. And they've been doing that for a long time. But we're seeing more companies trying to branch out and focus on TV and movies. And even Xbox has put out a statement earlier this year talking about this, where it's like, yeah, we want to find more IPs, start them as a game, and, and, but they'll be able to branch out into TV and movies and all of that jazz and merch and take have this like multi-entertainment approach to IPs. And while some are built that way and some really work well that way, not all of them do. But these companies now are thinking, hey, we can think more in line with how many ways to sell basically the same product. And that's becoming one of the new trends now. And this is why we're seeing so many games becoming movies is because we've had a few successes right like mario movie and like five nights at freddy's uh, but we've also had some really bad ones too like borderlands Ooh, minecraft i think is going to be another one and uh so yeah again we're just chasing the money and oh come on wake up companies you can't be doing that you actually need to chase the consumer give us what we want and we will pay for it. So with that, folks, thanks for tuning in. You can always follow me, too, at GamingGarbage22 over at YouTube. Don't forget our Twitch and Discord. I also got Twitter X now, You can, uh, which, again, is Gaming 
garbage 22 that's my handle but yeah if you want to look at all that stuff it's all on my youtube channel and you can follow me there and uh, hey i'll see you guys on the next one